today we've got one of the um, players I played with for a long time at TNS, um, won everything domestically uh, with TNS, Martin Naylor. He won Welsh Prem, League Cup, Welsh Cups, Welsh Premier, uh, the Premier Cup, um, many games in Europe, lots of experience, great person to play with, to have around the dressing room. Welcome, Nails, how's things? Not bad, Scott. How are you, mate? Yeah, yeah. good. Good. Enjoying, um, enjoying the time away from it, but feeling going to get free time, mate. <laughs> uh, you know, when you're in it for so long, it, there's not a lot of time to um, sit back, reflect, and whatever else. So, yeah, we, we've we've kept in touch anyway. So, it was it was nice to to get you on. I'll I'll mix the the TNS, TNS players and coaches up because I don't want to just get TNS players on. But obviously, yeah. we. We spent a lot of time together traveling in and, and whatever else, and we, we go back a long way. So just want to share a few of your um, your stories and things like that, mate. So if we go back to the early days of football and, and your first thoughts, when did you start playing? Who was your role models and influences on your on your game? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, we started playing on four pitches. As you know, we had 11 aside. Uh and I started playing for a local club when I was seven years of age. Right. Uh, and we were playing under 10s uh, on full-size pitches. And I played for a side called Foddy Star, which is a local club run by us. Uh, and the standard was quite good in the Warsaw League. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was not a bad standard. Uh, so I started at seven. And we didn't lose a game for five seasons. Now, I say it was competitive, but we were that good. As a team, no one could get close to us. So we had a guy called Brian Bartle and a guy called Colin Eaton. Uh, I think you know Colin. He's been involved with Wolves for absolutely donkey's years. His son, Liam, is now at, at Shrewsbury in the academy. Uh, and they were kind of my father figures in football, really. Oh, okay. They helped me along a lot. Uh, and I stayed with that club up until I was... Up until I was 13, yeah. uh, and Colin, who was a scout at Wolves, put me into Wolves. Uh, and from there, we had a coach called Rob Kelly. Yeah, no, I've heard of Rob. Who's now, I think, he's, is he at Barrow now? Yeah, Rob was, he was sort of assisting when they, when their manager left, wasn't he? He was assisting to the end of the season. Yeah, the the and season. He's, he's, yeah. he's taken our back. Yeah. Great guy, yeah. brilliant football guy, loved him. And he, he really brought my game on as well. A hell of a lot while at Wolves. Uh, I love playing there. Great, great club. Uh, and I, it was unfortunate there, to be fair, because I could drop down a year because I had an August birthday. Yeah. So I was really, for, for my year, I was really young and I was small as well when I was, I haven't grown much now, to be fair, but <laughs> I, I, was, I was really small for my age. So I just says, listen, we're not going to offer you a YTS this year, so but we'll give you one next year, give you that extra year of development. So I dropped down a year, stayed on at six form for one year, and uh, I was one of the lucky ones who actually went in and trained with the YTSs a lot of the time uh, and played a couple of games as well. Sure. But unfortunately, they had, they had some really good players at Wolves and they were spending a lot of money on players at the time as well. Uh, a lad called Jamie Smith, who went on to Crystal fullback, Palace. Yeah, yeah fullback. He started as a striker, and he moved back to fullback and kind of killed me, to be fair. <laughs> so he, he actually he actually went there and did really well. Uh, so that obviously closed the door for me. After being promised a, an apprenticeship, I kind of, damn, what do I do now? Yeah. And I spoke to my parents, and Rob Kelly had actually come round my house and said, look, I wanted to give you a, a deal, but unfortunately, the club decided against it. It didn't help. I, I'll tell you a little story. I went in training with the YTSs, and uh, Chris Turner was the YTS manager at the time. Yeah. And he used to join in training. Well, you remember training, Scott. I never used to back out of a challenge. <laughs> We're training, having it five aside, and the ball's in between me and him. So I've sprinted to the ball, got there first, and turned my body into him. Didn't realise I dropped the nut on him and broke his nose. 
that didn't go down too well. Well, it didn't know. Pull the first team players were watching training and went up. Way! Do you know what I mean? It's all went. So all the first team players were absolutely ripping him to shreds. And he said, you, you go in there, there now. And I've just walked off the training ground like that. Oh, that's <laughs> that's me that. done. That's me finished. So <laughs> that, did, that didn't help. That didn't help. That didn't help you at all, did you? No, not at all. So, uh, like I said, I didn't get offered a white yes there. Absolutely devastated. Yeah. Didn't know what to do. Uh, and to be fair to Rob, he made a few phone calls for me. And I just I said to my I said to mom, I said, look, mom, I'm just gonna sign for the first club that offers me anything. I don't care where it is, I just want to play football. That's all I want to do. Uh and Hereford come in. It obviously takes a little bit of time. It's it's tough that age, isn't it? I was just saying, you know, it's, it's very it's very difficult. Is, Scotty, I had no inkling yeah. that I wasn't gonna be offered one. When some or, or, you know, when you're naive and you don't know football, you think if someone tells you something. Yeah, that they'll stick by it. Do you know what I mean? That you, you don't understand. I didn't understand football then. Didn't have an agent. None of my family were really involved in football. So I'm quite naive. You know, didn't really understand it. And uh, Rob made a couple of phone calls for me. And I went down to uh, Hereford. Yeah. And I had a couple of games for Hereford. Good bunch of lads. And I, to be fair, I did really, really well down there. And they offered, after two games, it says, we want to offer you a white yes. And I just said, yep, so let's get it done. Right, and you sorted that out? Let's get it done. Signed it, all done. On the night I signed, Birmingham City phoned me. We want to offer you a white yes. <sighs> Which is on my doorstep. I was devastated. <laughs> I thought, I oh, know, what can I do? Closer, even closer to you. Uh, yeah, what can I do? Sometimes happens. Uh, yeah, it, it's, so, didn't have a clue what to do. I said to him, look, I've signed, I've got to go. So at uh, 16, left home, went down to Hereford. Yeah. Uh, John Layton was the manager after he took over from, what was it, Downing? The old Coventry left back was the first team gaffer down there. And our youth team manager, Steve Ritchie, who was a uh, Scot- Scotsman. Yeah. Uh, loved me to death, obviously. <laughs> we had a really tough time down there to start with, obviously. Never moved home before. Always been at home with parents. Uh, struggled to adapt, yeah. And really struggled, mate. In the in the like two weeks of being down there, I was on the phone to my mum. Mum, you got to come get me. I can't stay here. Uh, this is horrendous. Yeah. We were stopping in digs. And the, the landlady had a cat. Now, I'd never had pets as a kid where they'd walk across your dinner table and stuff while you're eating. You've got cat hair in your feet. I'm like, mum, come on. you got to come and get me. Yeah. She's gone, look. Just stick it out, stick it out, give it a month or so. If you're still not enjoying it, we'll sort something out. We'll get you close to home. I can, okay. And to on be fair, land, on the landlady one, I can relate to that. I was I stayed in a place where there was three of us all in the same room, so they're getting a few yeah. from, from the oh, room. yeah. But, but we'd have uh, kebabs in the microwave sometimes, oh. they'd be cooked, <laughs> sometimes they wouldn't. They'd be uh, yeah, frozen, frozen kebab for tea and chips, it's like, yeah, you know. A young, you know, pro footballer, white yes footballer, should not be eating kebab and chips. Absolutely but, not. You know, you live and you learn, don't you? And uh, we weren't. Of course you do. We, did, we weren't in there long anyway. No, well, I weren't. Do, 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 you know, Gareth Davis, he works for the yeah, Welsh yeah, FA yeah. now, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. Down on the coaching side. Yeah. I was living with him. Right. Because uh, he was down there at the time as well, but he was a first year pro, I think, when I got there. Uh, and he was living with me. He said, look, we've got to move out of here. This is not fair for the young lads. Because I think there was three of us there and him. Yeah. So the club had arranged it for us to move out. And we moved out then to some barns with all the other first team players and everything. And it was really good then. Started enjoying it. Yeah. Uh, and did, did really well down there. But Hereford, as you're probably aware, we're a club that didn't have much funds. And when it comes to the second general YTS... Uh, they were offering contracts out and they offered three contracts out and they were for £90 for a first year pro and out of that £90 you had to pay £60 digs and it cost me nearly 15, 16 quid to travel to and from the the ground every day so I'd have nothing left at the end of it I'd better off as a white yes on me £25 and the digs paid for you yeah exactly so 
after my two years, I actually moved back home. Uh, but Graham, Graham turned us over in my second year. Yeah. And uh, he said, look, I'd love to offer you some. I understand you can't accept £90. I'd love to offer you something, but that's what we've got. That's the budget. Uh, and if you can't accept it, I will help you find another club. And he found Telford for me. Uh, Telford were in the conference. So one league below Hereford. Uh, and Wayne Clark was was manager. Yeah. Uh, so I went in there pre-season. Graham Turner sorted everything out for me, to be fair. He was he was good as gold. He was really good. Him and his chief scout, Ron Dukes. Uh, superb. Really helped me out. Uh, so I went, I went and played there. And great club. Decent players. Uh, really family orientated. You know, really helped me settle in. Yeah. Did really well pre-season and started a few games, uh, but it didn't go well for the for the for Wayne. He had a he had a bad time of it uh, and ended up getting the sack. And then a guy you know, Jake King, yeah, took over. And uh, to be fair to Jake, he was brilliant with all the players. Yeah, brought a couple of pl players in, Pete Wild in, uh, Evesy, yeah. centre forward. Some real good, good players. From his, I, think, I think from Newtown. I think a lot of them come from. Yeah. Uh, Shrewsbury lads. Pete Walding, good, great player. Yeah. Really, really good. Uh, and Jake started playing me every single week, which was fantastic for me. And I was, yeah. you know, 18, 19 year old kid playing first team at a conference level was, you know, it was, it was quite a good achievement for me getting in the team. Because they had a guy called Kevin Ashley there who went from Birmingham to Wolves. I think he, I think he was one of the... cost them nearly a million quid, I think. So I was keeping him out the team. Uh, and there were scouts there every week watching me. I was, I was playing really well. But I was on a non-contract. And uh, like I said, there were a lot of clubs watching and even Wolves had spoke to me. He said, look, keep doing what you're doing. We're keeping tabs on you. We'd like to speak to you in the summer. But all these clubs, Jake says, well, you know, sign a contract. He says, why would I sign a contract? Like I say, very naive, didn't have anybody in football, didn't have an agent. He says, why would I sign a contract? Uh, I don't want to do that because it, it, it's going to stop me. It's going to stop me moving on. This is what I was told by some of the players. Obviously, young, naive kid. You're kind of led by the older pros, aren't you? Uh, didn't realise at the time a deal had been done with Jake to go to Shrewsbury. And he wanted me to sign so he could give something back to Telford to right. purchase me. Uh, but in the end, I think that summer I had about six or seven clubs for me asking me to go and sign for them because I did really well in the conference. Uh, so but ended at, that time, up at that time, you've had a few, you've had a few setbacks, but it hasn't stopped you, has it? It's not stopped you. No, no. You've still, no. you've still got the drive. You've still got the passion to want to play football. You've kept going. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's credit to you, really, that you get a knockback, you go again. You know, you, you are still hungry to, to succeed, which is, which is good, you know. Yeah, I think you showed a lot of character. I talked about it, I talked about oh. it Goose and said, as soon as you get that knockback, 16, 18, you just lose everything to Fletcher. It's like yeah. a, it's like a kidney blow, and you just like think, oh, I, I don't want to go again. But you have to pick yourself up, don't you? And go and and it's all about the the strongest survive, don't they? And the mentality's got yeah. to play. Yeah, I was pretty determined to make it as a footballer because at, at that time as well, my brother, who was I think he was seventeen at the time, had just broke into Wolves first team, coming through at Wolves, yeah. So. At 17, he'd made his debut away at, uh, at Blues. And then he, he got his new deal. You know, his money went up massively. Uh, and you're just thinking, just that little break, just that little bit of luck can change your life. Do you know what I mean? And that's, and with us all loving football so much, that was the drive. That was the drive to be as successful as you possibly could and play at the highest standard possible. So, obviously... I kept going, kept trying to do the right things. And Jake had called me in the summer. He says, look, what are you doing? Are you going to sign this contract for Telford? Or are you, you know, what offers have you had? Told him everything that had been happening. Uh, he said, okay, 
come and speak to me. I'm, I'm signing for Shrewsbury. I'm taking the Shrewsbury job. So okay. So I went and spoke to him. He put a two-year contract on the table. And I just, obviously, with the relationship I had with him at the time, I just thought, okay, brilliant. Also, and he'd, he'd, he'd bought my game on a hell of a lot. Yeah. Helped me out. Uh, great with the players. His man-to-man -man management skills were superb. I thought at, at, at Telford, I thought he was brilliant. Uh, so I signed a two-year contract. Uh and obviously playing league football, absolutely superb. It's where I wanted to be. Uh, went in pre-season. What was that spell at shoes be like? You know, what was that um, that time there? Obviously, you've you've gone from Hereford. You've gone from um, what was shoes been at the time? The second division, this or the conference? The second. Division? No, no, second division. Second They'd division. just been relegated. They'd just been relegated from League One. Right. So. And Jake got, took over. Yeah. You know, he had a. I think he got a bit of a, a rough deal, didn't he, Jake? You know, he did well at Telford. Did okay at Shrewsbury, you know, with the players yeah. he brought in as well. He had good players there. He did, yeah. He had yeah. very good players. Uh, and good coaches as well. Mark Kearney, good lad. Roger Priest, yeah. uh, who took the youth team on very good. Uh, but for whatever reason, it just didn't, it just didn't work. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, look, I, I'll go on well with Jake. Uh, but I had a massive falling out, and I don't know why. It just it just come it come around, and I just I started the season really well. Started the first game, I think we beat Doncaster. I think was it Doncaster? Beat Doncaster two one, uh, and got injured in the game quite badly. All my ankle ligaments, uh, real bad injury. I think I was out for three three four five weeks. Which was unlike me because I could go into tackles and just I was like a little I'd spring back up and <laughs> just carry on. Uh, so it was a bad injury for me. I'd never really suffered with any sort of injuries up until that point. Uh, so during that that period, I was injured. Obviously, we'd never been injured, and being at a professional club, I just thought go in, do gym work, have treatment, go home, do what the physio tells you. Uh, and that's what I did for a few weeks. Uh, come back, played again, and then played another game against Brentford. Marcus Bent, I think, scored two on the back stick. Cheers, Marcus. Got him his move. Uh, <coughs> so, and then got injured again playing in that game, I think it was. Obviously, with the physio again. Frustrated, really, really frustrated with it. Because I couldn't get my ankle right, and I'd done, I'd worked all week uh, with the physio, trying to get ready for the for the game the weekend. And the physio told me to go on. He says you've done enough today. Get yourself off. First team come back from training. Jake had obviously asked the physio where I work. Yeah, you've gone home. He's blown where, the top. Where, where's nails? Uh, physio, obviously he's gone home. He's, he's worked hard today. He says, got me on the phone. He goes, where are you? I says, I'm on the way home, gaffer. Physio told me I've done enough. Told me to go home. He says, get back in here now. You're injured. You're in morning and afternoon until you're fit. I said, oh, okay. Uh, so I went back there. He says, you are in now morning and afternoon getting fit. And the relationship kind of, it fell apart after that. After that, yeah. Yeah, it just fell apart, mate. He had me like, for, for probably two to three months, didn't get nowhere near the first team. Wouldn't let me train. He had me running around the pitch, doing laps while the first team were training. I mean, it wouldn't happen now. It had oh, never I, happened. It wouldn't be allowed. I've, I've been there. I have been there myself. Mark Wright, the ex-Liverpool manager and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did a Chester. few. Laps. But could, because I could run, I was lapping. I was lapping the other lads. And he went, "You've done enough now." And you go, "You, you were that." <laughs> right. so it, it worked in my favour. Not spitting my dummy out and just going, yeah. you know, "I'll show you. I can run." If you want me to run around the pitch, I'll run around as many times as you like. So it worked in yeah. my favour that occasion, yeah. Yeah. Bro, I used to be running mainly, just used to wind me up as I was running, trudging around, watching the lads train. I just thought, <laughs> what am I doing here? This is doing my head in. So in the end, Telford coming for me to go back there on loan. Right, yeah. Uh, so that's where I did. I went back there on loan. And I went there for the rest of the season. And Jake pulled me back said, listen, Telford want to sign you. Uh, 
we'll release you off your contract. So I said, okay, give me a couple of days to think about it. Obviously, no agent, naive, didn't have a clue. About getting the rest of your contract paid up. Yeah, that. didn't have a clue. Senior players were like, don't you go anywhere. You get your contract paid up. The way you've been treated, you make sure you get something. Yeah. So I went back in his office. I said, uh, how about paying the rest of my contract up, Gaffer? He looked at me and <laughs> get it! <laughs> Got absolutely hammered. Yeah. Cheers, lads. Thank you. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so in the end, I ended up leaving. I was gutted as well, Scott. You know, it's a great opportunity yeah. Yeah. going to a league club, playing a few games, getting put in the shop window. And then it looks like you, you know, you got a bad attitude or I don't know. You, you, the relationship you was couldn't work it out. You couldn't really work no, it out. No, couldn't. You think, you know, you think that one occasion has, has stuck in his mind and he's not been yeah. really giving you a chance or. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or he was getting grief from above. You know, you've signed this player, you've given him X amount of money. He's not fit, he's not injured. Yeah, sorry, he's not fit. He's not playing any games. What What's going on? You've signed him. You know, you don't know what pressure's come, do you? No, you don't. And, uh, and that's, a, that's a lot of story. It's a story that goes with a lot of players as well. You don't, you don't know the ads, do you? No, of course you don't. So, ended up going back to Telford. Okay. Uh, and Telford at the time, Telford at the time, we're going full-time. Right, yes, I remember with it. They were paying a few quid and getting a, yeah, yeah. A, some big hitters in, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, I signed I signed there for a year and a half. Uh, did okay for that season. Telford did really well. Uh, but then tailed off towards the end of the season and Jimmy Mullin was manager. And then Jimmy Mullin got the sack and Jake was struggling a little bit at Shrewsbury. And somebody said, oh, Jake might be coming back. I was like, you are joking. You're killing me here. And it ended up Jake come back. Yeah, and I was like... Oh, so how was, that, how was that relationship straight away? Was he? Was there a little bit of a, a, a meeting, a discussion? Or was yeah, it, was, to be fair, was it? I, I knocked his door. I said, look, what's the situation? He said, no, clean slate. Oh, look, play, what yeah. happened? Yeah, no, no happened. grudges. No grudges, nothing. Uh to be fair, I played uh, and then got a couple of injuries again because of the way I played. I was couldn't show you out of the tackle. I'm up even more now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I strapped it up dead tight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and didn't really get involved towards the end of it. So he said, look, I can't offer you a new deal. Uh, and I moved on and I went up to Went up to Scotland to play for a club, Green at Morton. Green at Morton. Up in Scotland. At How was that Camp compared to what you've been used to in terms of quality of player, training? It was different, mate, because wow. the league had, it had better quality, but it was a much slower pace. Yeah. It was a, you know, they played through the thirds a little bit more, even back then. There was a bit more football played. Yeah. It wasn't as hustle and bustle as the conference. Uh, as you know, back then it was kind of you lumped it up to a big man and then played off him. Do you know what I mean? That's what it was. Uh, but it was, it was a bit more football played, uh, and it was all right, except we didn't get paid. All right. Yeah, played a, signed a two year contract and did not get paid. Blew all my savings. From day one, you mean? Or? We got paid for the first month. Oh, God. And so. then up until Christmas, the club was in a mess. Yeah. There was a takeover going on. They signed six players from down south. Uh, who's, who's a gaffer? Alan, ex-Villa centre off. He left Villa to take over the job up there. Uh, can't remember his second name. But he, anyway, he, he took over. Uh, brought six of the lads from down south up there with him. And none of us got paid. It was a joke. Got kicked out our digs, what which I had to pay rent for. They told us we're going to be paying rent, uh, and it was a it was a real struggle, mate, a real real struggle. And I I, I had to come home at Christmas. So again, absolute. Again, Killer, mate. you know some knockback. A difficult situation where, you know, you've you've done it, you've tried. It looks like you'd have gone anywhere to try and play football and stay in the game, which you absolutely. Did. And then something like that happens, and it's another kick in the teeth, another bit of a. Am I going to continue to do this? 
with their yeah. dad there, with their, with their thoughts of, do I have to get another career now? You know, is it, am I going to get another club? Or did you always think, no, I'm okay, I'll, I'll bear with it for another couple of years? What, were your, what was your thought process? Well, because I didn't have any commitments as such. I didn't have a mortgage then. I uh, didn't have a family as such. Uh, so I was okay financially. I'd, I wasn't tied to anything. I had no real pressure on me to kind of be earning. And after, like, like I say, but it, coming back down south, it was so difficult to find a club after that. It was very difficult. And I ended up signing for a local club called Rush All Olympic. Sorry, not Rush, Bilston Town. And they, to be fair, they were good as gold. They gave me a signing on fee. They said, we'll pay you through the summer. You're a big, big signing, you know, you're a big name locally. Oh, geez, okay. Kind of threw it back, boys. I thought, okay. Uh, so I ended up signing there. But the standard was terrible. Yeah. It was like two or three leagues below the conference. And I really struggled to adapt to it. I couldn't, the players were not on the same wavelength. It was, it was tough. Real tough. And Liam says, uh, Liam Eaton, who was one of my close friends, Colin's lad, says, Aradell, his sister, uh, her fellow plays in the Welsh League, Gaz Wilson. Uh, and he said, there's a club there, TNS, who are going places. You know, they're going full time. There's got a brilliant chairman who wants to push the club on, they're fighting for Europe. Uh, would you be interested in going in? And obviously, I thought full time football. Never heard of TNS, by the way. Uh, I said, okay, yeah, I'd like to speak to them. Gaz organised everything, and at the time, Dean Williams had gone there, and David Bridgewater. They'd signed for TNS already. They'd left Telford and gone there. Well, I played with those guys at Telford, uh, and it says. Yeah, it's a good, good club, going places, going full-time. Uh, yeah, it'd be worth talking to. So what was, your, what was your first thoughts on Kenny then? So did Kenny phone you? How did it, did you yeah. have him or what was... Uh, Ke- to be fair, Kenny called me, he says, coming in uh, for pre-season. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a look at you and, you, you know, you have a look at us, see what your thoughts are. We'll obviously speak to you after a couple of weeks and let you know where where we stand and if we can do anything. So I just thought, do you know what? It's an opportunity to go full-time. Uh, and the lads have spoke highly of, of what the club wants to do. So I thought, it's, listen, I can't, I can't play here forever at Bilson. It's, it's, the standard's not great. I need to be playing at a better standard than this. I'm better than what I'm playing. Yeah. Uh, I suppose you'd, you'd known a few of the players as well. You'd have... Yeah. Um, I think we'd we'd met on a couple of occasions on a couple of nights out, maybe with a shoe. Yeah, yeah. Lot. So definitely, you'd, you'd have known a few of the other players. So I think it probably it was a it was great timing for you, wasn't it? At that, you know. Yeah. Moment. Well, Bust, yeah. Buster was there as well. Steve Anthropus who had Anthropus. been at Shrewsbury as well. So I thought, well, if he's there, Dino was there, and Bridgie, you know, yeah. it sounds like you know quality. There's a few lads there that I know already. Yeah. Let's go and give it a go. So we went in. Where was where, Pavilions? Lovely place. Um, that was near Port. Yeah. Yeah, Ron Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah, a few from that end. That's why we used to train there, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was. It, it, to be fair, first got there, we had a car school of me. Obviously, there was a few lads travelling from Birmingham. Uh, Bridgie, Buster and Dino. So we arranged to meet up with them, went in pre-season. Uh, and to be fair... Did really well. I was quite fit uh, and did well in the games that we played. And it's after, I think, the second second game, I think it was, Kenny called me in, said we'd like to offer you something. Now, I'd never met the chairman. Didn't know who he was. I'd heard things about him, but I'd never met him. What were your first impressions there, then? Scotty, I honestly didn't know who he was. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly didn't. I've turned up at these TNS buildings in, in Oswald Street. And I've turned up and there's this little guy come out in a training kit. What is this? <laughs> come on, hi Martin, you're all right. Come up to the office. 
I thought I was going to meet the chairman. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm Mike Harris, the chairman. I was like, well, was I thought, <laughs> he was taking, I thought he was taking you up to see the chairman. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was taking me up to see the boss. He's come down in his training kit and his hat on. I was like, that, Jesus Christ, this is the chairman. Couldn't believe it. But after spending a little bit of time with him and listening to his vision and, and what he wanted to do with the club, I was like, wow, he's talking about Europe here and Champions League football. And yeah. And really you going... Thought, oh, that's a million miles away, you probably thought, didn't you? you know? Yeah. Well, turning up at pavilions, oh. mate, getting changed in a little shack and oh, man, training on the shower. pitches we used to train in. What about the, the pitches and the... Um, I mean, the showers, there was a big hole. <laughs> when big it hose. used to get wet and there used to be an oil slick across the pitch. <laughs> oh, it was like radioactive from the, the factories. Yeah. And, oh, it was, oh, it was amazing, different, wasn't it? Different level, wasn't it? So, it was, mate. It was, but do you know what? We had a fantastic bunch of lads, yeah. a really good bunch, and that's what made me want to sign as well. You know, I went into Mike and he said, I want to offer you something. Go away for a couple of days, have a think about what you want, uh, what you're happy with, uh, and come back to me. So obviously, in the way, on the way home, in the car, I said, the lads like, did you get offered anything now? Did you get offered anything? I said, well, he's told me to go away and, you know, come back with some figures for him and, and what I want. And Buster's like, right then, Nalsy, <laughs> this is what you want to do. You want to ask for this, this and this. So I was like, what? I'm never going to get that. You know, I'm, I'm a young kid. I haven't got, you know, I, I haven't really done that well. Okay, I've been a pro, but he's not going to give me that. So I went back in. I said, okay, Mike, I'd like a three-year contract on X amount of money. He's gone, okay. He said, do you know what? I'll give you an extra £50 year on year. I was like, huh? What? Is this guy for me? I'll come out gutted. I was like, I should have asked for more. I was devastated. <laughs> but obviously, again, no agent. Very naive. Yeah. Didn't know what the club was about. So I'd, I'd signed the contract. But do you know what? From that day on, with the group of players that we had, it, it was amazing. And I loved I loved the first three years at the club. It was it was incredible. Yeah. Brilliant. I mean, our first... What was our first? I, I, I mean, you, sign, you signed and we won the league that, that year that you signed? Or not? Was it the year after? No, I think it was the year after. Was it? Yeah, because we, we played in the... There. From the first... I signed 2002. When did you sign? I can't remember the year, Scotty. 2003, three. Year after you, wasn't he? Probably was a year, year after you. So, you and Leron. Yeah, so John just signed before me. I then signed. We only had four or five full time. We would train yeah, yeah. with bin bags yeah, on. Yeah, so I was on the so, year after you. You know, we, we only had the, the core of four training on a Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Monday, Tuesday night. And then it slowly, slowly drip fed in. But yeah, it's it was going back then. To where it is now, it's it's chalk and cheese, isn't it? It's like no, it is, mate. Miles away. Same about the vision. He wanted to sell. He wanted that vision, sell it to the players. And to be fair, you know, he's what he's actually said he's going to do. Up to now, he's um, he's done it. So yeah. To be fair to Harris, mate. When you're to be talking, fair to Mike, yeah. Everything he's done. Players, players, when you're talking yeah. about those players, we had so many good players. The core, the the not just yes, we like to drink and a and a little bit of a get together and stuff. And obviously, trips home were very good. We'd all have a beer and there'd be lads falling off the bus. You probably wouldn't get that now. You know, there was hard well, getting, there was, some of us would go on to, uh, you know, we'd go to a club or we'd stay out all night. But that was part of it. We, we got on close, didn't we? And we, we had a successful time of, of, of yeah. things through that, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, mate, I didn't, I didn't enjoy those Monday mornings around that pavilions. That 12 minutes, mate. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Remember that every Monday? Every Monday morning, driving in, <laughs> twelve minute run, the poles would be out, wouldn't they? And we'd be <laughs> turn up and you'd be like, "Oh no, not again!" We'd, um, we'd drive from Shrewsbury an hour and a quarter, hour and twenty. Me and yeah. Jack, we'd probably got in about three o'clock in the morning. What <laughs> up? But like, put the alarm, <laughs> just bang the alarm down. Oh, <laughs> yeah. God, just, uh, but had a little drive, had a little sleep on the way. John would drive or, or vice versa, and then <sighs> then you just do it when you. John would struggle, I'd be okay. John would be like, how'd you do yeah. it? How'd you get away? There's a few of them. Oh, Lero. He used to struggle on them 12 minutes. Him and Evo at the back. Blowing. Him and Evo and Buster. Big Evo there, struggling as well. At, at oh. Mind you, 
to be fair, how many Mondays did he miss ever? Okay. The um, horrific, mate. He was horrific. He'd have that many excuses up his sleeve, but <laughs> that's that's for another day. So, so any stories about the lads that, that were there, mate? Any good ones? Any? Oh, mate, there were some corkers. Some of them we can't talk about, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> But the, I mean, Bridget, what a character that lad was. Everybody loved him at the club. Brilliant. Great guy. And I'll tell you what, he was some player as well. Good player, wasn't he? Very good, technically, very good. Dave Bridgewater, for anyone that. Um, Dave Bridgewater, nails yeah. it. Talk Dave to Bridgewater, Dave yeah. Dave Bridgewater. <laughs> Couldn't tackle for Toffee. Got me in all sorts of trouble. Got me sent off a few times because I used to get frustrated with him. Uh, but some of the things, mate, I, I remember one time we were. Coming back from training, we decided to go for some food and a few drinks in Shrewsbury. I think you were there as well, Scott. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think there was four or five of us having a few drinks, and these three girls come over, started talking to us, and this is just Bridgie all over, by the way. Some of the stuff. He was the cleverest thick kid you've ever met. <laughs> couple of Guinness in, couple of Guinness, oh, couple right. of lagers in. Yeah. Yeah, Guinness is in. We're all sitting there having a, a bit of banter and a, a good laugh. And we hear someone over my shoulders, and Brid Bridget's opened his mouth. He's gone, are you three twins? <laughs> so I've looked round at him, I've gone, you want to say that again, Bridge? Yeah, are, are you three twins? <laughs> oh, I fell off my stool. Oh, I'm actually rolling around oh. this bar on the floor. Couldn't help myself. But that's Bridget all over. It's one and of those things that, you know, when we speak, speak, it always, it always comes up. <laughs> it always comes up. Just is that like slow drawl of us as well, like brilliant. Yeah. The, the girls were in stitches as well, weren't they, to be fair to them? Oh, absolutely in bits. In bits, mate. But, you know, Bridgie used to get ripped. <laughs> I remember our first, our first European venture, uh, Amica Ronke. I think it was Amica Ronke, wasn't it? That was, yeah, that was, that was the first one I think we, we had, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Bridgie, uh, Brabs was there as well, wasn't he? Perhaps sharing a room with him. Yeah. So we got our first night, we've just arrived at the hotel. We've been given all our cards to get into our hotel rooms. And uh, Brabs has said to Bridgie, Bridgie, don't you lose that card. You keep that card close to you. You don't lose it. Bridgie gone, all right, Brabs, okay. No worries, no problems. I'll look after it. Within 30 seconds, the card's gone missing. Next thing you know... <laughs> A couple of lads have gone missing. Come back down after about 20 minutes. Cards reappeared. I found it, Brabs. I've got it. Don't worry, I've found it. <laughs> so Bridget, Bridget goes up to the room. And he's he's lying in his room and, and comes back downstairs. He's gone, lads, there's a real funny smell in my room. I don't know what the problem is. It stinks. Has anybody else got that problem? Brabs has gone up with him. Brabs has gone, Bridget, have you been to the toilet? This room smells. Come back. Didn't hear anything about it all night. Come back down in the morning. This room absolutely honks. There's a serious problem with the sewage in there. <laughs> Found out one of the lads that took the key card, gone up there, left him a little package in his pillar. <laughs> and he slept on his pillar all night. <laughs> and Babs <laughs> has gone absolutely hype at him. Gone I mad told him. you. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> But that was Bridgie. Oh, brilliant. That was Bridgie. Didn't have a clue what was did going you, on. Did you ever find out the culprit? I'm not saying <laughs> you used to play in goal. That's all I'm saying. Oh, what a good lad. He was a good lad as well. Dean Williams. Dino. Dean yeah. Williams. He, he mate, liked the didn't he? Good lad. Yeah, mate. What a ping he had as well. He was, he was probably the best keeper with the ball at his feet. Him and Hake, very close. Dino. Good lad. He had his yeah. he had his troubles with the club as well, didn't he? he um... Well, he did, yeah, they fell out quite. <laughs> some of the stuff, we can't repeat what used to be said, but some of the stuff that went on. Oh dear, that's, yeah, that's another day as well. Think, it was mental. But like I say, mate, absolutely fantastic times. And some of the, like you say, going into Europe, to be fair, Kenny, by the way, just to speak about Kenny, his attention to detail as a coach. Back then, yeah. Back then was like, it was miles ahead of anything that we'd experienced. Yeah. And I think looking now, you know, we've both been on coaching courses. Looking now, he was doing stuff back then 
that was way ahead of anybody else's time. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, we used to we used to kind of laugh at it at times, well, you know, when he used to move well, your two yeah, yards. Yeah, he'd, he'd move and you'd go, I'm the ball! I'm the ball! <laughs> <laughs> He would be doing that. He he was managing us. He didn't even have the B license. So I know. you can imagine he'd only got his say C certificate or his basic level two, whatever it is. Yeah. And winning leagues, but he hadn't passed his B. I remember I doing the, the B license assessment as part of the TNS team and him getting assessed as part of the training. Going that's that's a a, make sure you yeah, make sure you do it properly. Yeah, and I've got this. <laughs> like, yeah no problem. <laughs> I remember that session, Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> Buster had gone out on the Sunday and had a few drinks. He was kicking the corner. <laughs> I couldn't see what he couldn't see the ball, could he? he? Was he was moving well, moving round. He was like stumbling round and yeah. you remember that? Brilliant. But yeah, like you say, he was way ahead of his time. He was really good. He did you know, really we do, well, like, wouldn't we? We'd do shape and we'd step over. Yeah, yeah. Play. But he was put, he was laying down, you know, what he wanted. He was his absolutely his thoughts, his processing. He wanted to do playing out from the back, looked at playing out yeah. from the back. It was, it was, it was well done. The lads knew their roles. Even on pitches we were playing on, because the pitches like that now, it's 3G. Oh. It's simple to do it. The pitches yeah. had a, um, the burner cow, the old burner cow. The burner cow. cow. What was it called? The recreation ground? Uh, Treflam recreation. I mean, we used to get changed, didn't we? And there'd be the old deers across the um, change room <laughs> having a bridge, having a bridge there. Yeah. Hard, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was we were lining up. Welsh Premier League, <laughs> maybe like 20, you know, older women playing cards and whatever else. And right, right. else going to get that, you know. Crazy time. National league. So, Crazy. Um, yeah, I think, same as me, mate. You know, your thoughts here with Kenny. Kenny's one of the biggest influences. He's, he, oh, in massive. terms of not just coaching, but getting the right players in, yeah, the right mix, the right type of player, the right type of person. Superb, like, you know. Yeah. And that's he's, he's the seasons, mate. Yeah. first couple of seasons, to be fair. We didn't win the league, did we? Because no. did Barry Pippus? Barry, I think won. Will, maybe, yeah. And then and then we did for three years in a row. Yeah. Welsh then Cup, we, then we Cup. Cup. you know, we went on and do you know what? Do you know what the trigger to that was? I think having a goal scorer because we had we had Wildy, who was very, very young at the time. Yeah. Buster, uh, Wardy, John Toner, you know. They all worked really hard, but they weren't really that instinctive goal scorer. Yeah, clinical finishing. Yeah. Because we created a lot of chances, didn't we? We had you yeah. on the right uh, right wing back, which suited you perfectly. Yeah, and, and Kinga. Kinga on the other side. Both yeah, flying behind the wings. Yeah. You know, energetic, quality, set plays. Yeah. It, was, it was perfect. Then we had... A yeah, good, it was. The defence was decent. You know, we had good yeah. defenders. And then yeah. midfield, we always had a good midfield, whoever yeah. played in midfield, didn't we? So... It was a very, very good, strong team to, to play in. Yeah, it was. Time, wasn't it? And do you know what, though, mate? Everyone bought in as well. Everyone bought into what Kenny wanted. I could have gone into midfield and played your position. You could have gone and played mine. Every single person in that team knew everybody else's job. Yeah. And he encouraged everyone knowing that as well. So that if there ever was a problem or something needed managing on the pitch, we could do it as a group. Because he us to be fair, didn't he? He came to us from the sideline. Yeah. Oh, mate, absolutely was, got hammered, didn't he? But he was 100%. He was, yeah, he was a perfectionist, mate. He was yeah. Loyal, honest, yeah. winner. And, and I think that's what sort of he wanted from his players. Yes, he had a go. Yeah. He, showed, he showed that team he wanted to win. Like, and oh, we, yeah. We, and what about when he trained? What about when he trained in the um, 10v10s on Friday night? He used to love it. He'd strip off, he'd get his shorts on, he'd end up playing. We'd end up playing another 45 minutes extra on a Friday. He was scoring. He wanted to score. <laughs> yeah. You know, nowadays it's on the stopwatch, bang, hour and ten, you're done. Yeah. Kenny, yeah. no, we're having another game. Cagsy, light up another faggy soon, we're on. <laughs> Cagsy will be here on the side, take the fags out of his socks, <laughs> wouldn't he? All right, Kenny. <laughs> Loved it, there. man. Loved it. But, look, good times, mate. Listen, I want to talk to you about um, European nights. Yeah, you come to the club. Chairman said, "Look, I want you to play in Europe." You know, the first time the bigger get well, not, they're all big games in Europe. But if you look at the first one, Man City, uh, yeah. two thousand four, two was it two thousand three, two thousand four? I think it was two thousand four. Yeah, it um, was two thousand four. Yeah, what about that, mate? Lining up there, you know. Yeah, well, like, mate, I, re I remember the night before. 
Yeah. We'd gone up there and watched the game against Barcelona, hadn't we? Right, yeah. It was a few days before, wasn't it? The weekend before, was it, maybe? Yeah, yeah. a few days before, wasn't it? Yeah. Ronaldinho playing and Deco. Yeah, mate. Um, and, oh, we, you know, we walked into the stadium. We were like, wow, this place is incredible. This is where we made we're brand new there. stadium. Brand new stadium. The players on show was ridiculous. It was crazy. Uh, and game, the, the game, mate, the game was... You know, a completely different level of anything. to anything How that quick was it. You've got experience. You've got the left back. It was the left back, the German. Tarnat. He was he was spraying the ball across the. Mate, the he could zing a ball seventy yards and drop it on a sixpence to Sean Wright Phillips. It was the fastest thing on two legs at the time. And I think I was on against him <laughs> on that left left the midfield. Um, Unbelievable, was, mate. Uh, uh, Sanji high and Sean Wright Phillips playing out right side. I, yeah. was, I was just running around. I was dizzy. I was just like... Right, you mate. But to On a fair, different level. 1-0 at half-time. 1-0 yeah. at half-time. And then, obviously, we tire, we, we get stretched. 5-0 at the end. But look, it doesn't matter about the score because... No. Fantastic. Two legs. Second leg at the Millennium Stadium. Millenni- Millennium, yeah. It was... Something when? Like mate, li- listen. How many Premiership footballers don't even get to play in Europe? Yeah. How many Championship players would love to have been playing that night. Yeah. No, you know, I, there's a lot of players that, that have not played at that level. Yeah. And we were very like, privileged to be able to do so. And Kevin Keegan was a manager, wasn't he? Kevin yeah, Keegan. He was, yeah. You know, it was just it was what was the game we played and he turned up, didn't it? And they put him yeah, in the we, box at the top. We played Chelsea didn't we? Everton. We played was it Chelsea, Chelsea or Everton? Chelsea or Everton. Everton because David Moyes was there. Right, so we played, and, and Rooney came and just, and he was carrying the yeah. bottles. Rooney was carrying yeah. the bottles for the lad. But Man City was, Man City was there. Liverpool winning the Champions League and then us playing them. You oh, know, mate. I talked, well, I talked a lot about the draw and stuff like that, but, you know, how, how did you feel listening well, to that? And I was actually injured during pre-season. Pre-season with Kenny was, they were not easy. Tough, it wasn't it? as scientific as it, it is now. It was oh. a tough pre-season. Uh, where we were tra- Vauxhalls. We were at Vauxhall Motors, weren't we? Yeah. Training there. And there was about, I think there were about five or six of us in the bar having some treatment and, and watching the draw. And uh, the rest of the lads were training. And they've done the draw. And Because obviously Liverpool qualified because of winning it, because they didn't finish in the top four. That's it. Yeah. So we were all in the bar watching it and we've drawn Liverpool and we're all jumping around in the bar, jumping. We sprinted outside. All of us are supposed to be injured, by the way. <laughs> sprinted outside. Lads, lads, we've drawn Liverpool. We've drawn Liverpool. All the lads have gone up. Next day in training, I don't think anyone was on the injury table <laughs> and everything stepped up another level. <laughs> Miraculous recovery, yeah. I know, yeah. Everyone was bang at it. So in that, you played right back, right wing back. You'd yeah. Never, yeah, I don't think you'd probably played midfield before that time in that spell. I think you went on to after. Afterwards, you did. Yeah, I did afterwards, but uh, I've never played centre midfield ever. So it was it was me and you, wasn't it, in, in centre midfield? Yeah. It was. It was yeah. you. It was you know, and and I felt for John. You know, John Lee. Well, th- I was just so, going to say that, mate. I was gutted to be fair because we just signed Pip. Yeah. And uh, Kenny pulled me, and he said, "Look." I'm thinking about playing you in midfield. We need legs in there. We're going to be under the cosh. We're not going to have much ball. I need people who can run and close people down and get at people. Okay. And I was gutted, mate. I was gutted for John. Yeah, me too. John was a close friend. You know, we were all very, very close. And for him to play all year. And to be fair, John did all the media, didn't he? But he was he was captain. Um... Captain. But he, he did all the media and I was devastated. He had a little knee injury, hadn't he? He'd had, he'd had a knock in pre-season or something. Yeah. yeah. And obviously so that still... went against him. And yeah. listen, I felt for him. We were, you know, we were all close. We were good mates, real good mates, best mates. Yeah. You know, we, and we travelled in together. We had, and, and to have that sort of a bitter taste in your mouth, everyone's talking about Liverpool. It'll be forever talked about and you're not part of the starting lineup. Yeah, it was, it we was all felt for him. Not nice. Yeah, we did. We were all devastated. But, in saying that, you've still got a job to do. Of course. And to be fair, with the lead up up to that game, Kayla was in, wasn't he then? Yeah, Kayla was, was coming in and helping Kayla out. was coming in. Yeah. And Ian Rush turned up at the training ground one day. Didn't he, he? Rush <laughs> in, didn't he? Do a bit of shooting. Yeah. yeah. Was, that, 
Was that the time we had the spy at the training ground and Kenny was sending people? Oh, <laughs> to him. He sent Tommy over to some bloke yeah. me and said, uh, "Sorry, mate, I'm just just finding out. You're not you're not, you're not escaping Man City, are you?" He said, "No, mate, um, I'm just I'm just on a I was on a late shift and um, just thought I'd come and watch training." It was just brilliant. Spygate. It was a Spygate one, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So so we're lining up in the tunnel. We're all you know we're we're there. We come out of come out of change rooms. 45,000 people, roughly. Yeah. Look down, look down the steps, you know, hairs in the back of your, your neck. Yeah. But what I wanted to talk to you about was uh, Xavi Alonso. You know, obviously, we were both chasing Gerard and Alonso around the field. Tosh was playing just as a deep liar, wasn't he? So he was trying yes. to protect us. But yeah. it was surreal because it was like a movie. It was like watching a movie, wasn't it? It, it was, was crazy, mate. The crowd, the, the atmosphere, the tempo, the pitch. Yeah. People said to me, what's the pitch like? The pitch was like, if you could have the perfect pitch and just go and plonk it, you know, and stand on it and, and take shots and whatever else, and feel yeah. just the best you've ever stepped yeah. on. Yeah. Well, do you know what surprised me, Scotty? How quick it was. Yeah. And even, even after that, you know, we played on Man City, we played on other good pitches. It was the fastest pitch I'd ever played on. The ball slicked across the, the ground so quickly. And I remember, I remember about five or six minutes into the game. And Gerard pinged the ball into Alonso. And Alonso's facing away from goal. And he's just absolutely whipped it. Right. And it's gone about two centimetres past the stanchion. And I've just looked at you and gone, oh my days, we're in for a we right are, game here. We, are in, we are in for a right game. Uh, Risa, Risa was like slapping the ball into midfield and we were like... Yeah, it was ridiculous. You're just not, you're just not used to the tempo, the pace. No. They were, they were totally in control of the game. They could speed it up. They could, they yeah. could slow it down. I mean, I don't, I think we had one or two shots with the whole game. I had a corner, yeah. took a corner. And when I went out to take the corner... Um, in front of the cop, they were clapping. They were clapping, yeah. going over. It was brilliant. It was just like, yeah, it you know, was. It was, it was, it was unbelievable. But I always remember trying to get close to them, trying to get close to Gerard, trying to get close to Alonso. I mean, you caught Alonso about three or four times. You caught yeah. him on top of the foot. You caught him down the back of the um, Achilles, and he was going, "Hey, Naylor, no more. Hey, Naylor." And I remember him like told you going, and he, he'd obviously like he didn't look at your name once. Let it go. Second time, <laughs> I'm gonna have word of him in it. Third time, <laughs> Naylor, pack it in. <laughs> you smiled. You, smile. you were like professional. You just kept giving it to him. Did you? Yeah, get okay. game, By the way, we had to, mate. Look, <laughs> people say, "Oh, you're playing against Liverpool." I bet you was in fit. I weren't in fear of you, them. Okay, you know who you're playing against, but I'm not gonna not go into a tackle because it's Alonso or Gerard. I remember two footing Gerard. He just looked at me like. Who the hell are you? What are you doing? Oh, I've God, a, I don't care. I've got a picture with me and Gerard going up together. And he's just probably <laughs> thinking, I'm just going to stay there. I'm not going to get touched by it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going into that. No, he's alone. No. And I, I was the same. I was like, you know. But anyway, look, absolutely brilliant. Highlight of my career as in terms of a match. Yeah. If anyone would say Amazing. one match, you know, superb. Going into the dress, um, into the into the players bar after. I think there was a few players there, Carragher. And, and yeah, Jack. yeah. It, it was, look, it topped it off. And for me personally, it was it, it was special. I'm, I'm sure it was for you. Like. Well, that that that's the highlight of, of my career: playing against the team you support, uh, playing at Anfield in front of almost a full house. Uh, absolutely incredible! Absolutely incredible! Brilliant. Great night. So, let's go away from that a little bit then. So, who is your um, three best players that have ever played? Who ever your, played? Ever played it? Your favourites growing up, now, whatever. The, the three best players that you've ever seen, you know, world football, whatever. I would. Gerard's up there as one of the best midfielders of all time, and then obviously you've got the two, Ronaldo and, and Messi. I don't think even past players. I don't think you can even get close to any of them. Their records and what they've achieved have been incredible. And I'd actually put Ronaldo in in front of Messi. Simply because he's done it at different clubs. Yeah. And still going strong. He'll and still ball. going strong at He'll his age. Until he's 40 or anything. He's an absolute machine. And genius. Both of them. Both of them are. Yeah. Just, it's just good that in our lifetime we can watch them play. I, I love Maradona. Absolutely. And Zidane and stuff. But, you know, these two. In terms of goal scoring, 
you know, Zidane was a great, great world-class player. But he didn't score 40, 50 goals a season, did he? Maradona but nowhere near didn't those. Score. No. Matt scored the odd year, but he didn't consistently do it through the years. So No, yeah. and that's why they're incredible. Incredible players. So with you've you've done the you've done the Welsh League, you've you've gone to spells with Real and, and other things, and and then you've gone to Leamington. Yeah. Later on, where you're now you still you're still coaching there? You're still involved at the football club or you're Yeah, yeah, still there, assistant manager. Yeah. Uh, and that also, Scott, just to just to touch on, you know, my time at TNS. Yeah. The one thing that I regret looking back, okay. and I don't know if you feel to be fair, you you were a bit different to me because you actually did it. I wished I'd have done more while I was there with regard to my coaching. Yeah. Because we had the opportunity, and look, I've got to give a big big up here to the Welsh FA because. They're absolutely brilliant. Their coaching modules and, and how they put things together is absolutely superb. Uh, I went on a B licence intensive uh, and it, it was absolutely brilliant. We had some fantastic people on the course. Yeah, I agree. The course was, was magnificent. I wished while I was at TNS I'd have took advantage of that because to be fair to Mike and Kenny, they encouraged us to do it. Yeah. No, they were. And I wished I'd have done yeah, I feel fortunate. You know, I've worked, worked, worked hard, but I've worked through, and they give me that opportunity to do it. You know, yeah. allowing me to make mistakes in the youth. Yes, and giving me head of youth, and then assistant manager, and whatever else, and then obviously manager. But going on and doing the courses, excellent coaching, excellent people that you're surrounding yourself with. Yeah, and that, and that's why it's been so strong over the last ten to fifteen years, whatever, because they do yeah. things the right way. They get the right people on and. I yeah, think, like absolutely. I said, the course so is going to get better, hopefully. So, yeah, so and hopefully that will improve the What league. level are you at at the moment? Then, what level have you got? B to license. Will you be B license? license? Yeah. And to be fair, mate, I, I would really like to do my A license and pro license, but there's no guarantees at the end of that. Good. And now, because of, like you say, I've got financial commitments with work and with Leamington, it's very, very difficult to have the time to get the course done. Takes a lot Very of time. difficult, and it's expensive. Yes, yeah. Very expensive. Um, so your time at Leamington, you've grown as a coach. Did you always have aspirations back then, thinking, do you know what, I'll probably be a coach or a manager? Or was it yeah. one where you'd moved into it and you thought, oh, I quite like this, this is this is No, one. no. You, uh, to be fair, Scott, I, I think Kenny kind of made us think about the game, and Kalo, to be fair. Yeah. Kenny and Kalo made us think about the game. And how to improve and I, I think I enjoyed that that side of it I always did Tackle side yeah, and, and finding solutions and yeah and I, I think Kenny and Kayla really introduced all of the squad to that yeah to be fair uh, and you could tell the ones who were going to be coaches I think the guys who really took note and really took the information on board yeah and going to Leamington back into the English system, uh, still playing, getting involved in the coaching side a little bit, doing warm-ups, asking questions, getting involved. Uh, what led to it, I actually did my cruciate. Right. When I was, I was still playing up until I was 36. Right. So, did my cruciate, I thought, that, that's me done. Uh, I can't carry on anymore, I can't play. I didn't really have a coaching role as such, just a player. But I got on really well with, with Paul Holleran, our, our gaffer, and Liam O'Neill at the time, who was the coach. And they approached me and said, look, we want to keep you around the club. You're brilliant around the lads. Uh, we'd like to keep you here. Would you be interested in being a coach? I said, well, look, I've got my B licence. Yeah, of course I would. I'd love to still be involved. So I never really had any time away from, from the club. Uh, and as time's gone on, we've improved as a, a, a team. Done a bit of yo-yoing a couple of times from uh, Conference North into the uh, Southern League yeah. a couple of times. But no, we've established, we, we're now established in the Conference North, which is a very, very, very competitive league. Uh, it's a tough league. And I'm, to be fair, I'm really enjoying the, the assistant manager side of it. Good. It's, it's, it's really good. Really enjoying it. 
you have an influence on young lads. And to be fair to us, we've 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 kind of been a, a springboard for players who have kind of fell by the wayside a little bit. We've helped them kind of come into a first team environment and really progress and improve as players. And we've ended up in the last couple of years selling like four players who have gone on to conference and, and, and league football and done really well. Which, you know, is it, I, I think that's a great achievement Very when you can do that and help young we players. Discussed, we discussed in our phone over the years about players and little, you know, yeah, yeah. keep your eye on them, watch them. And it's, um, it's interesting. It's always been interesting to see that conference north, south and, um, and the conferences. I mean, different... where would you put it, Scotty? Where would you... People asked me, you know, I had, look, I had, I had a discussion some about a month ago with, with someone saying, where would you pitch your standard that the Welsh Premier were even playing? It's very yeah. difficult because, you know, one night you can go to Copenhagen and we only lost 1-0 away from home. Yeah. yeah, It's their strongest team. And then we could go and get beat by a, a Chester City because, yes. you know, we're... We're not the overly physical, we weren't the overly physical side. We are naturally technical gifted players who understood yeah. the game. But if you were to say, can you compete in the second division for 38 games? Probably not. It's the consistency, it's isn't it? Consistency, it's squad depth, it's budget, it's everything else goes with it. But I don't know, through the years, could you say that you could compete in the conference? Yeah, I, th I think so. I think, I think yeah. so. And at times you could go to a first division club, like I've said, and beat them. Because yes. a one-off game you could do. So yeah, of course. I, I can never give a real definitive answer because it's it's open-ended. It's so many yes. variables. But wh whatever it is, it's the Welsh Premier has been a very good standard, and you've seen a different side now working in the in the Conference North, South, whatever as well. So um, yeah, what I would ask you: Have you been keeping an eye on the Welsh Prem over the years and things? Have you been looking at? Um, yeah, over the years I have. I mean, I, I still keep an eye on the old players uh, yeah. and a couple of players I played with, like Waldy. Waldy's still doing really well, still Waldy. banging in the goals. Oh, absolutely on fire. Yeah. Uh, I've lost touch with TNS a little bit since, obviously, yeah. in the last year or so, simply because of the restrictions we've been under. Yeah. And obviously players moving on. Uh, so it's been difficult to kind of keep an eye on it because, obviously, none of the games are really televised as such, apart from... Uh, the Welsh Channel School Joe. Uh, so, yeah, it's been difficult to kind of keep track of it. I know it's a lot closer this year. Uh, and it's going down to the last two games, isn't it? It's going down to um, Saturday. The two games are on side by side, both both. Oh, OK, we're doing that again, are they? <laughs> and, um, yeah, both. If Connors Key win, obviously they win it. They it's in their own hands, isn't it? If they, um, if, if TNS lose, there's, there's different variables, but if the only way, you know, uh, TNS can win it is if they draw. I think if, if Connors keep draw, TNS yeah. win, they can do it. Goal difference, whatever. Goal difference. Goal yeah. difference. But um, it's right to the wire. It's exciting. You know, it's last game of the season. It's what the neutral wants to see, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, of course it is. I'm the league needs to be as competitive as possible. Yeah, of course. And yeah. I, I think it's a lot closer. It, it has been getting closer over the last few years. Yeah, the standards improving because obviously in the Welsh league now you've got you have to be a pro licensed coach to to manage or coach a, a team in the league, don't you? That's right. So, so you know, I think technically it's got a lot better. Uh, improved it has. I, you know, I talk to people and they say, "Well, what's improved? Well, flat services, a three G, four G, whatever you want to call it. The coaching, the players yeah. are better. The players are getting a few more quid. You know, the top six players are yeah. probably earning some some decent money there." They've got part-time. Oh, okay. They can earn more than yeah. someone can, you know, in a, a lot of people at TNS probably could because yeah, yeah. it's probably a full-time football. You don't want to necessarily... What do you think it did, what do you think it did take, Scotty, for him to get close to a group stage? Yeah, it's, it's got to be a lot. Uh, it's got to be a lot more budget, mate. It's, you know, you look at the likes of Dundalk and Shamrock and teams that have done it in, in Europa, they're not paying... Yeah. They're not paying... Uh, the money that TNS are getting, they're getting double, triple some of those players. You know, you're talking yeah. 2,000, 3,000 euros. You know, that's not where, that's not where wow. TNS get paid, is it? So it's, no, it's, no, no. it's got staffing, budget, more vision. The league needs to get, we need to get 
more fans watching to, to promote the league, to get more sponsorship, to get more money in, to get more commercially. Yeah. Things like that, you know. Um, but I think, you know, if you were to, again, when we used to go pre-season against the Irish teams, we'd match the Irish yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. We beat Bowes. Oh, absolutely. We beat Bowes in the yeah. Champions League. You know? Yeah. And yeah. I think certain certain times you're on a par with them. But yeah. So who do you think is going to win then? Don't sit on the fence. Do you think TNS is going to win it? Do you think Connors Key going to win? I think Connors Key will. Do you think so? Simply because it's, it's in their hands. It's in their hands and they're, they're not going to throw it away. They're not going to throw that away, no, mate. I don't think so. We've been in that position a few times. Yeah. You know, we... No, nah, if it's in your hands, I think... Yeah, I think they'll do it, mate. It'll be interesting to see what Mike does. Yeah, it will do. Because he was having a bit of a hissy win at the end of last season. Yeah, he, um, yeah. Well, he he took it to the to the courts and stuff, didn't he? About um, unfair, you know, points and six games to go, and what have you. So, yeah. Anyway, listen, mate, it's been uh, been really good. Just Top man, follow Scotty. Up, just, just follow up now, mate. Yeah. So for me, it's the, the take home messages from from me playing with you as you know as, as a teammate. Been at levels, picked yourself up, came back always had that drive to want to be the best, you know, training first class, you, you train as you play, you know, on the end of a few tackles myself off you, you know, <laughs> um, but as soon as you cross that line, it was, I'm 100% focused. I want to win the game. And when yeah. you've got players in your team that are determined, driven, train well, play well, you look around and you go, we'll be all right today. Cause nine yeah. times out of 10, you win the game. Sometimes you might draw or lose a game, but when you talk about that period that we had there, it was you know it was first class, and and that's that's what this podcast is about. You know, Welsh Premier greats, people who have been in the in the league, and that are now going on to do things elsewhere. And it's it's about the the people that have really had that that determination and that spirit and that and that hunger to do well. So good to have you on, mate. Good to speak to you, um, and um, all the best for the. Uh, next season going forward and, and whatever you choose to do. Hope the family is well, mate. Hope they're all good. All good, mate. All good. Thanks very so much. Bad. Thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah, got been, uh, getting a few more on for next week and I'll, uh, I'll put it out there for who's on uh, on the next podcast. All right. Get a few of the boys on, mate. Be a good we'll banter. Do. We'll do. Cheers, bud. Speak soon. See you later, mate. Goodbye. Okay,